It's another beautiful day in Rancho Palos Verdes. I'm Liz Brown Swanson, and you are watching RPV City Talk on the road. We start this show right here at Hess Park, where residents are coming to take part in the city's latest round of its ring subsidy program. The city is offering discounts to residents that want to purchase ring devices to help secure their homes. We're going to find out what this ring program is all about, and then we're going to travel down to my house in Sea View, where my son will install a ring video doorbell. And finally, we're going to end this show at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. We're going to have a whale of a time watching what's going on with the whale watch season and all the latest preparations for the 2020 whale of a day. So let's first start this program by taking a look at ring. Hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Shane Lee. I'm the administrative analyst in the city manager's office. I work as your public safety liaison, trying to continually reinforce our public safety programs and innovatively improve anything to do with community livelihood here. So the city is partnering with Ring again. We're pr providing a $100 subsidy discount, $50 from the city, $50 from Ring, and it's off select devices where uh, residents can come and purchase the devices at that discounted rate so that there's an additional level of comfort and security that residents can have for their households. Well, my concern is all the break-ins that we've had in the city and it's really um, disconcerting and uh, to have something like this it makes you feel much more secure. My kids insisted that I get a security system. I don't have one. So when the city offered the special deals, I thought this is the time to do it. I don't know anything about it, but I guess it's easy enough to find out. Go online and ask people who already have them and I'll feel secure. Um, I got the ring do uh, doorbell too and two spotlights, one for the side and one for the back. So there are seven security devices, six cameras. So there's the Ring Doorbell, Ring Doorbell 2, do and Ring Doorbell Pro. There's a spotlight, and their three spotlights are wired, battery, or solar paneled. And there's a Ring security kit as well. So with any of those devices are, are part of the subsidy discount. And on top of that, we have several accessories. There's extra battery packs and extra a chime bell that helps works as a Wi-Fi extender and uh, can also alert the homeowner if the ring is not loud enough. My neighbors have a ring doorbell and they like it. And my regular doorbell died, so I had to go battery. So I thought I'd come and check it out. I think our neighborhood is pretty safe. We haven't had very many issues. and. I just got it because I do need a doorbell. I like the fact that it will probably announce when somebody's approaching. And since I have cats and not dogs, they don't bark. So that's why I got it. We have a ring camera from years ago and needed more coverage. And part of the reason is the coyote problem <laughs> that uh, trying to protect our animals. And then things keep getting worse in general and so you like to be on top of who's in your, who's around your property and what's going on. I think the reason why we like this is because um, the, the, uh, the video is very clear and we can hear the sound and we can talk and communicate to those that are there if there's somebody at our door or whatnot but we, we just really like how responsive it is. We had um, Somebody come to the door very late. He was a legitimate guy from a business, but that late at night, you worry about it. And so he, we could say, who, is, who are you and why are you here? And it was so comforting. What is it about the success of Ring that we want to see residents use it? Yeah, great question. So back in 2016, that's when we first started the program, we've understood that there were an uptick in residential burglaries and just certain crimes. And this is one of our many multi-pronged approaches to help um, provide more security around neighbors um, so that individual households and neighborhoods can have more um, you know, protection and video footage for themselves to feel that there's a deterrent against uh, potential uh, burglars as well as providing video footage in the unfortunate case that there is a burglary so that this allows our uh, residents to share, if they would wish, uh, video footage to our, our sheriff department, which we have been told definitely helps in investigating cases and clearing cases as well. When you purchase the Ring video uh, doorbell systems, um, it captures video. Explain what it actually is doing and the fact that you need to do the extra step to probably sign up for the actual preserving the footage. Talk about that. Okay. Yeah, so with the device itself, uh, it is live recorded uh, um, as there is motion detected, so they'll see videos through their phone or through the app. 
If you would like to have saved footage for up to 60 days, there's an additional Ring Protect uh, plan. So what that does is for $3 a month or $30 a year, you can save footage, uh, it uploads to a cloud server, which you could then download onto your own personal devices or email, and at which point you're able to then, if you choose to share with others or share with the law enforcement if something happens, or just to have for your own sake, you're able to have a footage for yourself. To, to clarify, any footage that the, your ring security device captures is your personal and private property. If you would like to share that, you may volunteer to do so with the law enforcement. Uh, ring or the city do not have access and do not save or uh, use the footage without your explicit permission. So for the residents that missed out in today's event, I know there's a limit on how many subsidies the city can offer up. Can you share what happens next for viewers watching that might want to now buy a ring and get the discount? Yeah, so the subsidy number we have, there are 500 discounts we can provide. So if, they, if you were not, if the residents are not able to come to this event, then it's going to be online starting uh, in a couple of days. And then the program will go up to 45 days uh, or until Mar uh, Monday, April 6th. So online, what they can do is uh, email partnerhelp at ring.com. And ring will then verify uh, proof of residency with the with the individuals who are participating. And through that, then they'll be able to receive a unique discount code. If, it's, if they need any help, they're free, feel free to call City Hall or myself. My email is slee at rpvca.gov, or to call the City Hall number and ask for Shane, and I'll be able to help direct uh, the residents on the next steps. Now, I've purchased a video doorbell pro to install at my house, so we'll travel down to my home in Seaview and watch my son install this to find out just how easy it is. So we have the hardwired Ring Doorbell Pro video, and so what I'm talking about is specific to that. Before you start the process, a couple tips I have are go on YouTube and watch the video that Ring provides explaining how to install it. Download the Ring app to your phone, and also ring your doorbell and figure out where the actual Ring device in your home is. Get yourself familiar with that whole process before you go ahead and dive in and you might save yourself a few headaches down the line. The first thing we did was identify where the actual ring, the doorbell ringer is in the house. Once we did that, we turned off the power to the breaker. And then basically we just followed the directions uh, that ring provides and followed those all the way through. Now I've just spliced into the system the ring pro power kit. So now we're going to remove the doorbell and attach the ring. So I'm going to unscrew the old doorbell. We're taking off the doorbell from the wiring. They provide you with this masonry drill bit to drill into brick. Easy, very easy. That's what the ring will screw into right there. Now we've got the ring doorbell installed and the light just came on, so it looks like it's working. Ring doorbell is connecting to the internet. The most challenging part of the process was establishing a Wi-Fi connection to the ring device. You're going to want to make sure that the front of your house has a strong Wi-Fi connection before you start this process. Ring gives you a masonry bit for drilling into brick or stone. They give you a little screwdriver. They give you everything you need. You will need a drill. And other than that, that's the only tool that we had to pull out of our own toolbox. Once we finally got it all done, it was really cool to see the final product uh, working in action to actually be able to see live video outside and really crystal clear definition and works pretty seamlessly from your phone. So it was definitely overall, I think, worth the project of putting it in. It took us probably around 45 minutes to install. I think uh, the benefits for Ring are incredible. You have video surveillance for a very low cost and the ability to see who's at your door without ever actually approaching the door and to, for it to be recorded. All right, I have to say a big thank you to my son Hunter for installing our Ring doorbell. It was great to have him home and put him right to work. And there's a lot more happening on this edition of RPV City Talk on the road. We're going to travel to the Point Vicente Interpretive Center to find out about the whale watch season and all the latest happenings to get ready for Whale of a Day. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Captain Andrew Olvera from the Los Angeles County Fire Department. And I want to remind you how to keep your family and home safe from fire danger.
Make sure smoke alarms are in working order by testing them monthly and replacing the batteries once per year. Make sure you have the proper amount of alarms in your home. Also, make sure everyone in the house, especially children, know what the smoke alarm sounds like when it goes off. If you need more information, go to the LA County Fire website, fire.lacounty.gov. Remember, fire doesn't take a season off, so be prepared in case of a fire emergency. Welcome back to RPV City Talk on the road. There's not a better place to be on a gorgeous day like today than right here on the patio of the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. Behind me, we have members of the American Cetacean Society's LA chapter conducting the annual whale census. We're gonna find out about that project and the numbers of whales they're seeing passing by our beautiful coast. And also, we're here to give you an update on the 36th annual Whale of a Day celebration. Mark your calendars for April 18th. It happens right here. The community will come together to celebrate the gray whale. We're gonna find out from the event organizers today just what plans are happening for this year's event. And also, we're gonna check out the poster contest. They're judging posters right now from kids in the community is to get everybody excited for this year's Whale of a Day. Hi, I'm Emily Rodine. I'm with the City of Rancho Palos Verdes and I'm coordinating the Whale of a Day event this year and I want to invite all of our community members to come out and join us Saturday, April 18th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. What you can expect to see here would be um, all kinds of games for kids to participate in, uh, crafts to enjoy, vendors that will be selling different marine theme uh, merchandise from paintings to jewelry. We'll also have organizations that are from the local community and um, other organizations that are kind of in partnership and in line with what we want to do, which is really educate the community about this event and the whales that come and visit here. You are in partnership with Los Serenos de Point Vicente, the docent group here at PVIC. Talk about that partnership and the role they play at Whale of a Day and, of course, all year round. Los Serenos is our volunteer organization here that operates out of PVIC and they're just here on a daily basis to give the tours of the museum. They also lead hikes in the nature preserve and so they're pretty much our educators about what our PV has to offer and, sh and share with the community. So Whale of a Day, it is our most integral partnership um, because between the city staff and Los Serenos, we pretty much have all the basis coverage for all the different offerings at the event. Okay, just talk, starting with today, I was here, you have the docents um, giving tours, but also they were doing the judging for the annual Whale of the Day poster contest. Yeah, so the poster contest has been going on for several years now, and it's really a way to get the kids involved and excited that Whale of the Day is coming up, and they get to express themselves through their art, and it's something we get to share and feature at the event. This year, we're going to actually put the poster contest winner on a magnet, and so that's something visitors can purchase and kind of take away, and it really makes the kids feel good. This contest has been going on for uh, over a decade and what we do is we invite all middle school art students in PV to participate. So we have gone to the schools um, twice. First we went and introduced it and told the kids what exactly we're looking for in a poster because the winner actually their poster gets used as the as the poster that advertises the event. We also make mag magnets out of the top winner and the winner is recognized at the, at the um, council meeting and it's, it's a really big event and it's a big deal for all the kids. So there, we tell them what we're looking for. We're actually looking for something that is going to inspire people to come to Well of a Day. So we're looking for color, for theme, for just basically something that's going to really look great. And then there's just the personal aspect. So we have five judges from the community. We have um, some actual artists and uh, some just members of the community and members of PVIC and who are doing the judging today. Kids this year, I think, did a fantastic job. We have 74 entries. Um, this year, um, we went and introduced the contest, and then we went back two weeks later and kind of talked to the kids about how they were doing and what was going on. And some of the kids were like, do I have to have a whale in my poster? And I was like, no, you can do whatever you want, but you're not going to win if you don't have a whale in your poster, you know? So we do have a lot of gray whales and in a lot of different aspects. And I think it's going to be really difficult for the judges to pick a winner this year. So we have a winner, and then we have th you know second and third place, and then seven honorable mentions. But every kid, which is I think a great thing about this contest, is every kid 
gets a certificate saying, thanking them for participating and giving them some comment on, on their artworks. Personally, I love dealing with the kids and teaching the kids about nature and about what goes on here and all about natural plants and what animals are here and it's just pretty inspiring and even working at the museum when people come in really from all over, around the world and to introduce them to this beautiful peninsula that rose up a million years ago is, is just really exciting. How about for you, this is well watched season of course, have you spotted any beauties out there? I have actually seen a couple, not as much as I would like, but I did actually just yesterday we saw two wells going by, so that's really exciting. And now we're watching these judges going by as we're talking, what are they instructed to do? I mean, what are they looking for? I mean, obviously there's colorful work, there's whales, there's hot, what, are you, what is sort of the criteria? So they've been told, they're going to be told, um, to look at, at color, at composition, at, um, but mostly, most importantly, it's what's going to grab your attention. You know, what is going to inspire people to come to Whale of a Day. So it's sometimes it's surprising one will win, you know, not necessarily the most artistically perfect one, but one that really just inspires somebody to, to say, hey, yeah, this, this would make me come to Whale of a Day. It's great to be with Sally. You are chairing this year's Whale of a Day. What are you looking forward to? Gosh, um, number one on my mind as chairman is good weather. Um, because that really makes the day for us, and we've had fabulous weather in the last couple of years. Um, last year we had whales really close to the shore, um, breaching, playing. Uh, it was marvelous. So uh, we're hoping that it'll be a good day for everybody, for families to be out in the sunshine. Enjoy. Today I was here because you're doing your poster contest. Um, event right now, judging in there. Also found out about a new puppet show. So just talk about some of the fun stuff to look forward to with this year's Whale of a Day. We, um, we have things for, um, to do for every age. So uh, we're hoping to unveil um, a new, dis new display in the museum um, on that day. So we'll see if we can get it done by then. The, um, there's going to be uh, inflatables. Again, we do that every year, and the kids love that. Um, we have crafts for the children, um, face painting. Gosh, you, every time you turn around, there's something for the kids. There are games for them to play. Um, there's entertainment that goes on the whole day. So um, we have a bluegrass band that, as a matter of fact, um, the leader of that band is one of our docents. I think it is just a fun, fun day. And um, we have great food now. We always have had great food, but we have food trucks. We have um, wine and beer garden area. So there's, there's something for everyone. I, some people come back year after year. Other people just discover it for the first time and everyone seems to have a great time. Well, we have a lot of exciting new happenings at this year's Whale of the Day, including a brand new puppet show. Catherine, you're gonna tell us all about what's happening with this year's puppet show. Okay, well, the puppet show is entitled Guillermo Goes to Mexico, and it's all about a young whale who travels down from Alaska to Mexico. And on his way, he meets lots of friends and has a lot of interactions with other, other animals. So, Just talk about everything that's behind this puppet show. Well, they, the goal was to try to make it interactive. We wanted the children, instead of just sitting listening, to actually get up and join in with the fun. So we based it on the idea of rather like an English pantomime, where the audience has to participate. So we decided a good way to get them to participate was we wouldn't be the only ones with whales. We would give the children whales. So our goal then was every child who comes to the show will have their own whale finger puppet. So that our next problem was, how do we possibly manage to make 300, at least 300, we estimated, finger puppets? So we got together a group, we started in September, and we said, anybody at all who can knit, crochet or sew, please come along and make finger puppets. And we just had so much fun, everybody loved doing it. And you can see on our chart here, we produced, we started at the top and at zero, and we gradually worked all our way 
down and we got to the goal 300. So we're hoping we'll have more than enough puppets for everybody who comes along. When you come and watch the show, you'll get your own puppet and you'll be able to swim with your puppet, you'll be able to spy hop, and if you don't know what that is, you need to come to the show and find out. And then you'll be able to learn to dive with your puppet and join in with all the bigger puppets. Now, this is the royal star of the show. Tell us about this princess. This is actually Elizabeth Windsor who is a reporter for the BBC, and she is here specially to report on the migration of the grey whales. And she is one of the puppets. You can see her royal heritage from her very splendid tiara. She has the initials ER on her sash, and she obviously adores diamonds. So we were talking about all the wonderful characters that are going to be in this story. Um, obviously to share with the kids about what's happening in our oceans and with sea life here. But we are going to meet up with the um, big pile of trash. So tell us about Paul. We decided, well, if we're going to make Paul uh, a pile of trash, he would be perfect because he's got a wonderful accent and he has got the strength and ability to push that big pile of trash, which really takes some doing. Okay, I'm polyethylene here. My message is don't dump your garbage in the ocean. That's what I'm saying to you. I know where you live. I know where to find you. Don't dump in the garbage in the ocean. That's my story. My involvement with Whale of a Day is being a garbage heap. That's basically it. That's what I'm doing. We're going to do three shows. And um, it's about 20 minutes for each show. And it's for the kids. And... It'll be amazing. We are going to be talking about the number of gyres that are in the ocean. Every major ocean has a gyre, which a gyre is basically a current compiled garbage heap. And the one in the Pacific is twice the size of Texas. So that's one thing that's been growing and growing. The puppet show is going to be exciting this year. It's going to feature um, a story that's about more specific to the gray whales. Um, and then we're also looking to partnership with the Coast Guard to maybe do a little talk before that and then a special talk that will take place in our amphitheater. So those are two things that we're looking forward to highlighting. And you mentioned the Coast Guard. Will there be the annual, uh, they do a tour of the lighthouse. We're we going to still have that on Whale of a Day. Yeah, so the lighthouse grounds will be open in conjunction with Whale of a Day on April 18th. We want the community to enjoy PVIC all year round. You're only closed a few days of the year. Just remind everyone what's here. This truly is a jewel for everyone to enjoy. So we have just great local um, exhibits that kind of teach the education of the area that focuses on Palos Verdes Peninsula. Um, and one of the things that we are working on, and hopefully we can get it open by Whale of a Day, is some additional exhibits. So last year we had the opportunity to open the Fresnel Lens and the Whaling Exhibit, and so that was really a big highlight of the 35th Annual Whale of a Day. And this year we're hoping that we'll have our Gray Whale Exhibit open, and we're going to have topics that talk about birds and migration and navigation. Um, so if that's not ready by Whale of a Day, you can can definitely come on by every day we're open 10 a.m. to 5 we only close about four days out of the year so it's really nice to have an opportunity for families and adults and everyone for every age group to come by and visit us at, at no cost you know we only accept donations and that's really part of the beauty of this place is that you can you can come and just enjoy it on your own always great to be with you Elisa to talk about what's happening with the uh, whale census 37 plus years for you since you started this how are we doing in 2020 with the whale count we're doing pretty well. Our southbound count is on the low side, but from what we understand that there were a lot of southbound whales that traveled offshore. So if they travel out through the backs of the Channel Islands in particular, or even the fronts, we're not going to be able to see and spot them and count them. So right now we're at about 416 southbound gray whales compared to last year where we were at 516. So that's fairly close when you look at a population of about 36,000. Uh, it varies anywhere from about 300 to close to 2,000 for the southbound whales. And for northbound, uh, we've seen almost 100 to this point, or just over 100. And right now, we've switched just this past week into the mostly northbound migration. So we're seeing a lot more northbound now. And of course, this is going to take us right up through the whale of a day. And the migration will still be happening. What, do, what are we looking forward to on whale of a day in terms of what will be happening out here on the patio? 
Well, Whale of the Day is in April, and by that time, the big push of the northbound gray whales will have gone by. We'll still be seeing northbound grays, but we also have a chance of seeing northbound calves. We actually saw a northbound calf early this morning. It was our third northbound calf. That's extremely early to see northbound calves. We've seen a southbound calf also, so 35 southbound and three northbound, so it's really interesting. The calf count is low this year and low last year. The big difference is last year we had big number of skinny whales. Up to 35% of our uh, gray whales were skinny, uh, part of an unusual mortality event with lots of gray whales dying up and down the coast from Alaska to Mexico. Big difference this year, we're seeing late uh, southbound whales, but they're in better condition than we had last year, so that's great news. And here we are watching from the back patio of the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. This is a premier spot to yes. watch whales. Explain why this is just an ideal place to be. Well, this is a great spot. Yesterday was our biggest day of northbound so far. We saw 20 north and 2 south, and it's a fantastic place because it, this area juts into uh, the ocean. It, the whales will come down the coast and hit this point. So they may be four, five, six miles offshore, but come very close to shore here, perhaps. Also going north, we often get them coming, hugging the coast too. They might be cutting across from, say, San Diego and go all the way across the channel and come in close here. So this is a fabulous spot. We're 138 feet above sea level, and we could see whales that are out, say, six or seven miles. Not just gray whales, but in the last month, we've had sperm whales, we had uh, killer whales, we've had resources dolphin. We've had multiple species of dolphins, minke whales. So it's really been a fantastic year, particularly sperm whales, a couple sperm whales on multiple days. Kelly, I understand you as a volunteer with the Cetacean Society, you're here every week um, educating the community about whales. So tell us what, what your message is when you're out here. Well, one thing I like to show them is a model of the whale and tell them how to find it. The blow, the heart shape at the top comes from its two uh, blow holes. And I like to tell them when they're feeding, they come down on the right side in the mud and just eat the, the little amplipods about the size of your thumbnail. Most of them come down on the right side. 14% will come down on the left side. 14% of humans are left-handed. Go figure. That's kind of a neat little trivia thing. What's the closest you've been to a whale? <laughs> I went down to Baja, California and I was able to hug whales. The little babies came right up to the, the little uh, ponga, and we could touch them, hug them, we could hear them at night, and it was a very uh, great trip down there. You are new to the American Cetacean Society as a census taker. What brought you into this group? Well, I've been on boats with Miss Elisa, and she is so passionate about whales, and I love whales, so I just want to be a part of the community. Talk about the excitement today. You guys have seen a few. Yeah, we've seen two humpback or gray whales traveling together and then when I got here there was just one kind of just out of sight but we're just looking for anything birds dolphins um, fish at times just anything and you bring great energy you said your first day out here you saw breaching whales that's yeah. pretty rare I it, yeah for me it was my first time I didn't know what to expect and I just look over at the buoy and there's huge splashes with chin slaps and breaches so it's really exciting and so now you know all the terminology what do you want to share with the public out there watching about tips for finding the whales uh, patience patience and binoculars or with if you don't have them just look scan the horizon for any disturbance any blows kind of looks like a sneeze at the at the surface um, just anything any point where you can see the ocean just stare at it and you might see dolphins riding waves or uh, whales traveling for food or for mating so you said you've been, like for the last few years, you've been checking out the whales up and down the coast. So what do you think about our little spot here in Paradise in Rancho Palos Verdes? It's a little escape. I mean, we have a lighthouse. Um, we have this beautiful lookout point, just beautiful coastline with um, native plants. There's a little gift shop and a whale museum. So it's just so fun. I love being here. There's, for the most part, usually great weather. We can see Catalina Island. It's just, it's wonderful. I would recommend anyone to come and spend some time here. That'll do it for this edition of RPV City Talk on the Road. Again, mark your calendars, April 18th. We hope to see you right here for the annual Whale of a Day celebration. It will be a whale of a time. That's it for now. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. See you next time.